is Chris from GrowQuest and we're doing a check valve examination to see which head, if there's enough drainage to warrant check valves. This does not have a check valve on it. This obviously does have a check valve on it. It has a Hunter check valve. We'll see what the amount of water draining out of this lower head looks like. Okay, so we see that when the system's turned off, indeed, check valve clearly and obviously works. The head above it is still leaking out water that would remain in the pipe for the next cycle otherwise. And the next three lowest heads are also leaking out water. The difference is, even on this little slope, the droplets get larger and the larger the droplet, the more the wash off, runoff, and erosion occurs. So this is all water that would be available in a charged pipe the next time the cycle is going off and is draining from the downhill action. There's probably about another 12 sprinkler heads above there. In total, because the pipe goes all the way up to the mailbox and then actually back down behind here. You know, so there could be anywhere from 100 to 250 feet of pipe that's draining out here. And this is water conservation 101. I mean, this is the easiest thing to do is install these check valves into your shrub sprinkler head systems or by rotary and turf heads that already have built-in check valves. Many of the Rainbird and Toro sprinkler heads have check valves built in. I'm sure Hunter does too. But if you look at a bed like this that has to be on two or three times a week because it's so small and got a big slope in it over the course of a year, especially in Southern California and Southwest, that's a lot of water. And that's going to really reflect back big time in your water bill, especially in a larger property like this. Any of a small property, you want to do your bit, I suppose. I don't know. If you drive an SUV to the uh, mall and back, maybe you don't. Who the hell knows? But it's not that much to do. Check valve is about four or five bucks.